That's next generation AMD GPUs listed on a computer retailer website as spotted by Momomo US on Twitter. However, if you look at the name scheme here, it's not at all what we expected. It's the RX 9000 series as opposed to the 8000 series. We were expecting the 8000 series to come after the 7000 series, so kind of weird. Also look at the digits here. That doesn't say 9700 XT as you would expect, that says 9070 XT and 9070. Uh, if you look at the previous generation products, you'll notice that, for example, the 7700 XT, it comes in the second digit. AMD has generally placed the first digit as your product generation, and the second digit is more of your position, you know, low to high end within that generation. Whereas NVIDIA has done it more like what we're seeing now, where you'd have like the 4070, now we're seeing a 9070 from AMD. So this appears to be a move from AMD, uh, to make their naming scheme look more like the NVIDIA naming scheme. Also note that the highest one that we're seeing listed here is a 70 class product. That doesn't necessarily mean it's designed to compete directly with the 5070, because for example, last generation, AMD's 7800 XT wasn't really a 4080 competitor from either a price or performance perspective. Uh, but it does kind of gel, if that is the case, with the fact that AMD's Jack Quinn has been directly quoted as saying that they're not targeting the high end with this next generation, which lined up to the rumors that we've been seeing uh, coming out before then. So uh, according to the new naming scheme, as well as what we've heard directly from AMD and other rumors, it does look like they're not targeting, uh, you know, competing with the 5090, probably not even the 5080, looks like maybe the 70 class, and they're even putting their naming scheme more to line up with that. Also, uh, where's the 8000 series? Well, interestingly, there appears to still sort of be an 8000 series, but it's integrated graphics. So we've been seeing leaked benchmarks now in Passmark uh, for a Radeon 8050S and 8060S integrated GPU. That's an integrated, right? So you're not going to buy this as its own graphics card, but it does start with the 8000 series. Also note, again, that we're seeing it skip the second digit and go in for the next digit meaning it's looking like both this new integrated uh, graphics lineup as well as their new discrete lineup are moving more towards that NVIDIA style uh, positioning of the number for the uh, you know, product stacked um, you know, low to high positioning, which is interesting. Also interesting is the fact that this integrated GPU is outperforming an RX 7600 in this Passmark benchmark. So what are the details here? And then I'll circle back around and talk about the 9000 a bit more um, on that. Uh, but let's dive into this for a second. So there's two Passmark benchmarks here, and I will link all my sources in the video description if you wanna look at all of this uh, you know, in, in more detail yourself. But there's a couple of important things to note. First of all, there's an 8060S and an 8050S based system here. But note that when you actually look at the benchmark results, including if you isolate for the 3D graphics mark, the 8050S system is outperforming the 8060S system. And so that clearly indicates that something's not right with at least the 8060S's benchmark score. Now, uh, what could be the case? Well, if you do look up here, the motherboard is listed as AMD Maple STXH which sounds like a reference board rather than a retail board that you'd see in an in a actual retail laptop from another company. So that indicates that these probably aren't fully finished products um, and they could possibly not have fully finished drivers and things like that. So if anything, I would expect the actual performance to be better when we actually see it. Now, notice we do see the uh, 8050S, which has the higher of the two scores, scoring 16,663, the, 80, uh, the 8060S coming in a little bit below that at 15,965. And what's interesting then is if you look at how that Passmark 3D graphics result uh, shakes out against other competition that you know are known values, we can see that that 8050S is indeed outperforming an RX 7600 and is almost tied with an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte in this benchmark. It's also important to note though, that this is not a gaming benchmark. This is a 3D graphics test from Passmark, but this is a synthetic benchmark. This is not gaming. Um, 
So definitely keep all of that in mind when interpreting these results. And again, the fact that the 8060S is below the 8050S indicating these probably aren't gonna be the final scores that we get. But the fact that they're already this high, that is an integrated GPU outperforming the previous generation kind of entry level slash mid-range uh, RX 7600. So for those of you who have been waiting to see if integrated graphics from AMD surpass their, their low end, are we even gonna get a low end? That's kind of interesting. Um, you'll notice that if we now pop back to the 9000 series leak that we have here, it's only showing a 9070, right? Now that doesn't mean there won't be lower products. It's possible that these will be launching first. So those are the ones that this retailer is preparing for on their website uh, for these filters. Also, we have all the Watts on Twitter saying, um, uh, listing that this is the uh, you know lineup here, and they include a 9050 and 9040. However, I will say that based on this emoji, this could be all the watts just speculating rather than having any sort of inside information and could just be responding to the leaks we've seen so far that I've already just discussed um, rather than having any kind of inside information, although I believe all the watts has posted leaks um, correctly in the past. so who knows what to make of this. So again, we could still have lower end discrete chips that are then also maybe even competing in a similar performance tier to what we're getting out of some of the larger integrated graphics. But the integrated graphics might make sense in laptops, whereas you'd still want to be able to buy discrete desktop chips um, at, at the lower performance tiers, uh, which is probably what this is going with. And again, AMD has confirmed that they're not ch chasing after that high end. Also, uh, potentially we even know what the 9000 series reference models from AMD are gonna look like, because this is sort of interesting. Uh, look at that right there. So this is an ad that's been running on, uh, AM, on uh, Reddit from AMD for, well, this has been up for at least 17 days. But as of a day or two ago, this has started uh, hitting headlines because a Reddit user mentioned, hey, look at that GPU. That doesn't look like any reference model we've seen and nobody else could identify it either. And so uh, other websites have picked this up and been like, hey, there's at least a chance that that's actually what the 9000 series cards from AM uh, AMD's reference lineup are actually gonna look like and that the image has made it into this advertisement before we're actually seeing it uh, in actual retail products or the official announcement. So, I mean, it's just a cooler, so, uh, you know, whatever, but that's at least kind of interesting. So we might even have a picture to go along with what this 9070 XT might look like. Now, what is it gonna be like in terms of performance? Again, going with the 70 class, uh, maybe it's competing against a 5070. You don't know, right? You would hope it would at least beat a 7700 XT's uh, last, you know, uh, seven class, but you know, they've shifted the digit over. We're up into the 9000 series now. What do I think about this This change to, to, to that, by the way? Um, so again, it's a little weird that they're skipping the 8000 series, but I do actually like shifting the digit over, not because it copies Nvidia, but because it makes it easier to talk about their, uh, their CPUs and their GPUs. Um, without having to specifically say Radeon or Ryzen. Because if we were on, again, like, like last generation, if I'm talking about a 7600, am I talking about the processor or the GPU? Whereas if that had been a 7060 GPU and a 7600 processor, it would be more obvious just from the number without having to say an XT at the end or a Radeon versus a Ryzen. And those both start with R's anyway. So I'm not saying this makes it super distinct, but at least from the number itself, you, you would be able to tell whether it's a CPU or a GPU. So I think I actually like this. Um, I'm not necessarily happy they're skipping the 8000 series. I honestly don't care that much. It's just eh, whatever. Um, but I do, I, I think, like having the naming scheme more distinct between CPU and GPU. Anyway, but if it is uh, the 70 class, okay, I'm hoping it at least is as fast or faster than a 7800 XT at significantly lower price. Because, for example, right now, I monitor, you know, not just what MSRP pricing is, but what are the best deals on graphics cards uh, and sometimes I report that to you guys if there's anything particularly interesting uh, or I'll at least do a monthly GPU uh, buying guide, although I skipped this month because you should just wait until the new stuff is announced next month. Um, 
But we're seeing the 7800 XT regularly available for $440 or even down as low as $430 or $420. There's none listed on sale right now because I think these actually do sell out at this price pretty quick, which is an indication that there's demand here at this price to performance ratio. So 7800 XT class performance at $420 seems to be selling out pretty well when it goes for that price. Uh, at $430, um, it also just uh, was posted and is already sold out again at that price. I don't know what kind of supply was available. Um, again, a 7800 XT at 440, uh, 7800 XT at 430. So these have been at this general uh, 420 to $440 price range pretty consistently over the last month or so. And they, they do tend to sell well at that pricing. So if the 9000 series is able to at least give us 7800 XT level performance at the $400 or less price point with the rumor to better ray tracing performance, then I think that's pretty interesting. Um, it'd be nice if they also have something that can compete with their previous uh, 900 series products like the 7900 XT or maybe even XTX. If they could get XT, 7900 XTX level performance down to around the $600 price point and 7900 XT level performance down to around the $500 price point, again, with the increase, uh, rumored increase to ray tracing performance, and there's pretty good evidence for that. Like I said in my recent video about Project Amethyst from AMD, uh, well, from Sony talking about the future RDNA uh, RT improvements, uh, bringing uh, a doubling of their ray intersections with the BVH, uh, speed as well as some improvements to more divergent ray tracing scenarios uh, where uh, getting this, the stack calculated uh, in hardware. Anyway, the point is uh, there's a lot of evidence that they'll be better at ray tracing relative to their previous generation, even if they don't catch, catch up to NVIDIA. That'd be nice. So if their rasterized performance could be here, uh, you know, 7800 XT class at 400, 7900, you know, XT class at like 500, uh, 600 at the XDX price, I, that would be pretty cool. I don't know if we'll get it, but I think that's where I would be uh, at least interesting, especially, and here's the big one for me. If we're on the topic of what do I want from AMD's next generation, I want an AI-based upscaler that is at least almost as good as DLSS. Good enough that you can no longer throw that up as a major differentiator in your buying decision. Because right now, I think at least in the uh, price point that most people actually buy GPUs, ray tracing is still a nice to have, but not like a, a must have. Because for a lot of people, we're trying to game at like 90 FPS or more, in which case oftentimes you still turn off ray tracing to do that, unless you're buying a super high-end NVIDIA product. Um, Whereas because a lot of people are, like I said, trying to game, uh, you know, single player games at least 90 FPS, but still have a lot of the graphics turned up, uh, with DLSS, oftentimes if you're on, you know, 14 monitor, 1440p monitor, kicking on DLSS quality still looks really good, takes a minor image quality hit. In a lot of recent games, you're getting a big performance benefit, but I'm a lot more hesitant to turn on FSR quality uh, on the AMD products. And that's, that's a very real distinction. Uh, when you're chasing the, the uh, very performant stuff at the 1440p type uh, graphics card. So I think uh, bringing in something that to more directly compete with DLSS is going to be pretty mandatory if they really want to start taking market share from NVIDIA. Because right now there is a lot of those caveats. Uh, we have indication from AMD's Jack Quinn that they are working on an AI-based FSR. Uh, and had been working on it for at least nine to 12 months as of September of 2024. So hopefully that would be in a maybe finished state. Again, we have uh, in my last video talking about uh, the Sony PS5 Pro and Project Amethyst announcement, a lot of indication that there has already been a lot of collaboration between Sony and AMD on these uh, neural, uh, neural networks use cases in graphics. But how much of that gets into this generation that we're getting right now in January, that's still up in the air. But really hoping for something there. We'll have to see what ends up coming of it. The last thing that I wanna mention is just a quick update to the 50 series, not much new compared to my last video, other than there's been debate over whether we're gonna be launching with the 5090 first and then getting a 5080 later or whether we'll get the 5080 first and then a 5090, or whether we'll get both the 5080 and the 5090 at the same time. Uh, the expectation is currently that they'll be announced at the same time at, in, in CES on January 6th uh, with the NVIDIA keynote, 
Um, and that we'll also hear about the 5070 series then as well, although that will actually launch and be available to consumers much later. The latest rumors are pointing to the 5080 coming first in mid-January with the 5090 coming in later. Still just a rumor at this point. Uh, WCCF Tech has cited, I think, their own sources uh, uh, claim, making that claim. And then Cop87 Kimmy has uh, been taking that stance since way back in May. Anyway, I don't think it's massively important which one ends up launching first, so, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but do keep in mind that the 5080 is rumored to be significantly cut down compared to the 5090. So if you're going to be going for something high-end and the 5090 is coming later, it might make sense to wait for that. Although, again, we don't know what the pricing is like at this point. Uh, but again, quick uh, reminder that the current specs are that the 5080 is basically half the CUDA cores of the 5090 and also half the VRAM at 16 versus 32. Uh, it's po uh, possible that it won't be half the performance because that's not generally how these things scale. But uh, because uh, anyway, the, the point is, it, it, I've talked about this in other videos, so I don't, I'm not going to make this one just drag out with a rehash of what I've said in other videos. But yeah, the, the, the 5080 needs to be priced reasonably enough relative to the 5090 to make any sense. Otherwise, it's just a, an attempt to upsell you on the 5090. We'll have to see what comes of it, though. Maybe it'll surprise us. Who knows? I try to be positive. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, finally getting some information about that uh, next-gen AMD GPUs. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.